Well, hello there. Uh, <laughs> uh, my name is Robert Wolf, and welcome to Innovation Coffee brought to you by Arm. If you are one of our frequent viewers, you will have noticed that we have not gone live in quite a while. In fact, it's been, I think, several months since uh, we, we have done one of these live streams, but we're bringing it back. We're bringing it back. We are back full force here. We are still in the process of reworking this live stream, figuring out how to bring you all the best and most interesting content uh, in and around the ARM developer ecosystem, all the cool stuff that's happening in the ARM world. Um, that being said, uh, we hope to rejuvenate, re revive this innovation coffee with some really cool stuff. And we'll be making some announcements about that in the later uh, in the later days, in a few weeks uh, or so, when we kind of start uh, building this out. But still, today, we have an exciting, exciting program for you planned. We're going to be joined by Richard Berry, who is a senior principal engineer at AWS and also the founder of Free Artos. So we're going to talk all about the cool stuff that Richard and his colleagues and community are doing around Free RTOS. We're going to talk about AWS's collaboration, ARM's collaboration with Free RTOS, the cool tools and things that they've provided to the community, as well as um, a possible demo. So we might even see a demo around uh, ARM virtual hardware. And you all have heard about ARM virtual hardware back in the ARM Dev Summit 2021. Cool stuff around that. In fact, we might be able to see some uh, some some interesting. Uh, stuff, uh, uh, some interesting demos on a chipset that doesn't even exist yet. So this is the whole purpose of virtual hardware is to provide um, developers with the ability to kind of start prototyping and building on on uh, on uh, chips that, that aren't even out. So uh, one other thing I do want to say is that, you know, moving forward, uh, we've traditionally done this on a weekly basis. You know, we do shows every week. I'm going to start poking and prodding the community to see what you all think about possibly transitioning into instead of weekly, maybe bi-weekly, maybe monthly. We'll see. I'm going to reach out to some of you uh, more frequent viewers uh, of the show, see what you think about moving into uh, a different uh, cadence for, for this live stream or possibly even adding some new components to it. But um, this is all part of the rework and we will uh, be addressing that soon. So without further ado, I think it's time. Let's bring in our guest, Richard Berry joining us from AWS. And Richard, hello, welcome. Hello, good to be here. Yeah, are, are you comfortable sharing where you're joining us from actually uh, in the uh, world? I, I am in Seattle. Seattle, oh, wonderful. Yeah. I actually love Seattle. It's a, it's a beautiful place. I've been there a few times. My wife loves Seattle. She wants me to go there with her. I've only been there by myself so far. <laughs> yes, I, I, I actually live on Bainbridge Island. So oh, nice. uh, a short ferry ride away. Okay, cool, cool. Well, I, I'm, uh, I'm one of the few people that uh, I've, I work, I'm working at home, right, as you can see. Um, it's one of the few people that actually miss their commute. On the oh, boat. you miss the commute because you get all yeah. the view from the ferry, right? Like you, do you actually drive onto the ferry and then drive to work or you just... No, just I, I cycle on. You cycle on. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. That sounds like fun. Interesting. All right. Well, Richard, we'd like to start off these shows with an introduction. Call it an origin of story, an origin story of sorts. So, who is Richard Berry? What do you do for fun? What do you do for AWS? What do you do for Free RTOS? Let's get some of the let's get some of those juices flowing. Tell us, tell us who who Richard Berry is. Right. So, um, yeah, I would I would say, what do I do for fun? I, I I'm extremely lucky in that I enjoy my work. So uh, that that's fun. I uh, also enjoy spending time with the kids who are growing up very quickly. Uh, what, what have I done in, over my life? Um, well, the last 20 years or so, I've been working on Free Artos, which is obviously what we're going to be uh, kind of focusing on. Before that, um, start, started my own little company when I was still at university uh, in the final year there in industrial computing. So. I, I, my path actually is through embedded software, real-time software. So a lot of people in the embedded space are electrical engineers that need to do software. The course I did was kind of the other way around. So it was really focused on uh, embedded and real-time software, but we did electronics as well. Uh, yeah, so did 
had, had that little company, which actually still exists, but doing something completely different now. Um, and did various other short term things. But the, the, the main other part of my life was working with uh, aerospace and um, we did flight worthy software and, and medical devices. And so that was that was all very interesting, interesting work. And during that during that time, uh, I was actually looking for an open source operating system myself. This is 20 years back, mind things were very different back then. And um, having not having not found one and uh, that having not found one that I thought I could uh, actually recommend to somebody else, uh, and mainly because I'm a geek. I decided to uh, create one myself and um, was very, very uh, kind of deliberate in thinking about all the reasons I wouldn't use the, the systems that are around at the time, be that, you know, back, back in those days, people were very worried about IP infringement. Um, people are more used to open source these days, of course. And uh, you know the documentation or the development state or the support state. So I, I was quite deliberate in trying to you know, fix all those things. Uh, start, what started off as a very small project. Um, I was, I think, I was kind of right in thinking there was a a gap in the market there. And then I spent the last twenty years trying to keep up with it. So it, it came kind of uh, all all consuming. And uh, what I ended up making. What I ended up making a living out of. All right, cool. I'm, I'm looking at the YouTube right now. People are commenting on on you know your cycling, your commute, and the ferry. How that must be a lot of fun. How Seattle's too wet, um, and how uh, uh, hybrid robotics. His 1980 self uh, wants to know what an RTOS is. Uh, my 1980 self just wanted a Nintendo. So <laughs> <laughs> I think I was like I was born in 1985. So. Uh, yeah. Thinking like 20 years ago, I was uh, when you were when you were finding out what RTOS to pitch to people and literally creating one. Um, I was uh, trying to pick out a guitar, <laughs> uh, 16 years old or 15 years old. So um, very interesting stuff, Richard. And thank you for sharing uh, your story with us. I think that that's awesome. I want to remind all the viewers in the channel if you do have any questions for myself or, of course, our wonderful guest here. Um, please feel free to post them in the YouTube. We are keeping an eye on that um, and uh, making sure that we can bring as many questions as possible over to Richard. Um, this is great. So, um, you know, I think uh, we've gotten to know you now a little bit. Very cool. Uh, the next thing is what we call our icebreaker round or innovation coffee cribs. So if you have some cool hardware on your desk, now's the time to get that ready. Let's queue up the segment. Innovation, coffee, cribs, welcomes Richard Barry to the stage. Richard, what kind of cool stuff do you have to show us? Yeah, so I, I, can, sh I can show you what's on my desk, but I've also got a pile of boards next to me as well, if you're interested in seeing that, some of the old Just, just like scoop them all up and just like, you know. Yeah. Them up <laughs> well, I think I'll have to point the camera down there because they're quite oh, okay. heavy. So uh, one thing I, I, I normally have on my desk is um, one of these. This is... Um, as a Xilinx Zinc board. And the, re the reason I, I use these a lot is because compared to most of the hardware we work with, there's an awful lot of RAM on here. So uh, all of our tests will run at once. So in my in my office, which I do go into a couple of days a week now, uh, there's, there's one of the, the, the big Xilinx boards, which is just running continuously effectively, uh, doing doing soak tests. So these, these are... Um, you know the, the the boards. Most of, most of our testing can only run a subset at a time. So we do we do testing in Windows and Linux, and um, you know on on these large processors, but of course on the small ones as well because they're more more common targets for free assets. And of course, um, starting with uh, ARM virtual hardware is another test test platform, which I'm sure we'll come on to. There, it's it's difficult to. <laughs> When you're demonstrating a real-time operating system, it's difficult to uh, have something which looks exciting here. But um, we also have so one of the things we did recently was uh, introduce three what we call um, 
featured reference integrations, which are trying to go beyond just the operating system and look at uh, how you would create production worthy devices. So here we're looking at doing things like secure boot and making sure that you know your internet connection is secure. And that implies that you've got secrets, you know, normally uh, private keys and that kind of thing, and how you secure those on the device. Um, so the, the other board I happen to have on my desk now, because I was actually doing some webinars with NXP, talking about it is this. So this is, a, I don't know if I can hold that to the camera, it's reflective a bit. So this is um, an RT device uh, crossover MCU from NXP, standard, uh, standard development board. And on there, we've got this uh, Arduino form factor, which has a, um, an SE050, if I've got the name right, uh, secure element. So, um, the, so we have a reference project, so I can show it to you later, which uh, you know, does everything, everything you need to uh, you know, create something which is more production worthy. So, you know, with, with open with open source software, we, we can we can try and educate people and we can provide references. Uh, but you know, there's so many different combinations of things. But, one of the things on there, uh, you know, talking to the secure elements that we use is a library called PKCS11. It's actually an API called PKCS11, which is um, like a, a session-based way of handling uh, crypto objects like private keys without ever exposing them to the without ever exposing them to the software. So, so are we gonna? By the way, very cool. Uh, thank you for for showing some of that stuff off. Is by by any chance are we going to get a, a going to move that camera down? Can we see that pile of boards? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm um, So this is the thing. Like we've got we've got a lab. Uh, I haven't mentioned. I didn't. I didn't mention AWS in my little history, but I can talk about that. Um, so in in the lab, we've got lots of hardware. I think I don't know twenty or thirty boards or something, and we try and have the latest. The latest boards in there, and that's where all the the check-in tests and the overnight CI and all that kind of stuff. But Freeosos is an everything is in in open source, right? So you can look back at the entire history, and there's like a, a history of the development of the embedded space kind of documented there. So what do we do with boards that we're not using on a day-to-day -day basis anymore? Well, sometimes people ask questions and need support. So I have to say, my 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 cataloging. Is not is not half as good as uh, it should be. But if you look down here, I have a, <laughs> a, a crate, uh -oh. and in, <laughs> this crate is full of things that we still have examples for that occasionally we need. Very nice. We need to support people. And it's, it's worse than that because I don't know if you can see it, but there's there's actually I said my my cataloging is not very good. There's also a bag, and if you look at the cupboard behind me, <laughs> that's that's, That's full of too. boards as well. So when I, when I was moving to the US about five years ago, it was a bizarre load that we were uh, bringing with us. Yeah, I have a I have a similar situation. So you can see this this thing of boards right there. This is all all boards that I kind of this is like my memorabilia uh, uh, board that I keep kind of like I I used to work for ninety six boards so uh, from Lenaro. So I have right. like almost every ninety six boards, and then I have a Pelican case up here that's literally packed. I have another Pelican case over here that's literally packed. And one of my ideas was because I don't use these boards anymore, right? You know, some of them I might pull out like on occasion, but I don't really use them. And I had decided in 2019 that I was going to just bring all these boards to my next event and then kind of hand them out to developers who I deemed worthy of using them or send them out to some folks. Hmm. But then COVID hit and I'm like, oh, great. Now I have these boards that are three years older, you know, like who knows if people are even going to want them anymore. Um, and there's no events uh, that I can go to right now. So to give them out. But yeah, mm -hmm. so that being was, said, the next event I go to, I will bring them. And if anyone wants them, they can find me. So the, the other thing I have on my desk, uh, some uh, a little while ago, you had Richard Elberger on talking about yes. Express Link. So. I do have an express link here as well. And um, this is this is actually a cellular board. So this is the, the development kit for it. So this is this is something oh, it's still in the bag. So really it's just that it's just that can there is actually a cellular 
ah. load end. And the rest of it is just the, the evaluation board. So there is, the reason this is still in the wrapper is I don't actually have a cell phone signal in my house. So I need to use wow. that in the office. So you can't even, no cell phone signal, not even for your phone? No. Oh, I, that would have been a deal breaker for me. I, I probably wouldn't have, have rented there or bought there. <laughs> so I should I, I should mention, by the way, ExpressLink is um, um, uh, ExpressLink is a is a product which uh, is it was announced back at reInvent, which is the AWS conference, and its uh, embedded world next week is is going into general availability, and this is. Um, really a kind of step change i think in simplicity and it being able to connect to the uh, uh, to connect to the cloud so you know if you get a radio chip or um, like a wi-fi or cellular in the future or others um, quite often you get a tcp stack on there or a tls stack what we've done is actually integrate all of the connectivity required including like access to c core elements and doing over the air updates and that kind of thing uh, worked with partners, we haven't done it ourselves, and um, put all that on the radio chip. So then uh, you, you you just have a serial link, human readable AT command set. And you, so you can just type AT connect. So you, know, you buy that pre-provisioned, comes with an identity, put it onto your hardware. And um, just through a UART, you've, you've got you know mm -hmm. secure connectivity. So that's just to explain what that was. I don't want to mention that in passing or not. I'm not saying no, that. that that's good. Also, um, we did do an episode with Richard Elberger mm. um, on, I mean, there was a big section of it dedicated to ExpressLink. And so I shared that link in the chat on, on uh, YouTube. Um, if you'd like to go check that out, we'll also probably include it in the description of the video for those of you watching it on demand later. Um, yeah. So uh, great. Okay, Richard, we got to know you. We got to, we got to talk about all the cool stuff on your desk. Um, a nice little segue into ExpressLink. But let's now get to the heart of this discussion, the meat of the show, this episode, which is about free RTOS, right? Mm -hmm. Free RTOS and ARM tools, collaborations with AWS and ARM, all sorts of cool stuff happening all around free RTOS. So let's start this off with this high level, all right? Tell us from the very top, what is free RTOS? And let's just start with that. Yeah, I would say the clue is in the name, right? So the the, fir the first part being free, it's, uh, an MI it's MIT open source license. So uh, it's very, um, you know, commercial friendly licensing. Uh, RTOS being an acronym for real time operating system. Uh, I think people are familiar with what operating systems are. Um, real time is the class of operating system and uh, effectively, it means it's deterministic. So um, there, you can always bound the time. There's an upper limit that you can uh, say between an event occurring and that event being processed. So it's, um, you know, devices that run Freatos are, uh, you know, in, in it was everything from toy trains to aircraft navigation systems, we say that. Uh, so, you know, if smart watches, thermostats, smart plugs, um, you know, industrial sensors, why is uh, it, agri agricultural stuff. So they're, why, they're in the environment, right? Why is it, Richard, that I don't, I, you know, me particularly, when I think RTOS, uh, real-time operating system, my mind automatically goes to the, micro, the microcontroller class of devices. Um, but you mentioned aircrafts and you know more complex devices i mean people are running our tosses on on cortex a's as well or i mean like am i correct in assuming or thinking that you know our tosses are more predominantly used in these microcontroller devices yeah well there's so free RTOS will run on every everything from 8-bit to like multi-core 64-bit 32-bit is really the, the the kind of sweet spot for it um but yeah it if you, if you think of some of these more complex devices, you might have one application processor and then a dozen microcontrollers around it. If you think, even my smart TV downstairs, right, that's, that's obviously running, I don't know, Linux or Android or something, uh, but it's running FreeRTOS as well. So it's not the, it's not the main processor that's running FreeRTOS. It will be uh, one, of, one of the peripheral chips, maybe, maybe something to do with the, 
the uh, remote control or something like that. So yeah. there, there's there's far more microcontrollers in there than there are, um, you know, than there are applications processes. Uh, yeah, Freeltos is used on uh, probably m increasingly so on Cortex A, uh, Cortex A as well. Um, okay. Cool. So 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 let's dive a little deeper here, right? Um, you kind of hinted at uh, the lifespan or the amount of time that free RTOS has been around when you said that 20 years ago, you couldn't find an RTOS that, that you could recommend. And so then you started working on free RTOS, what we have now. So free RTOS has been around, at least on your website, says 18 years. Not only that, um, you guys are getting downloads almost every uh, two, three minutes. So, so people are downloading this nonstop throughout the day. I think that those are, those are amazing statistics. If they've increased yeah. since the website's been updated or decreased, that's cool. Um, but 18 years of development with some of the world's leading chip makers, amazing. And then you're getting downloads nonstop throughout the day. Let's, let's dive a little deeper into this, you know, talk, t tell us about, about your partner ecosystem. Tell us about some of the value adds that these developers are seeing when they get uh, it, it, when they dive into free RTOS and, and actually start using it. Yeah, for, first to talk about those statistics, the way the way the statistics are generated are uh, through through the server which which people download from. So over, it, it's it's more like twenty years in reality. We're not. I'm, I'm not one hundred percent sure where it started. I registered free RTOS and SourceForge in two thousand and four. But it had been going a while before that, so it's a bit it's a bit lost in time that one. Um, but the <clears throat> being on SourceForge, I think this predates Git, right? Um, in an SVN repository, and the the statistics that you mention are the what that tells us is the number of downloads. So just to put some context around where that where that comes from, and, and that's all you know, kind of public information. You can go and have a look. But we moved to GitHub. Uh, some years back now, um, and that means that the, the statistics are a little less clear. There's this kind of discontinuity in the way things are counted now. Um, you know, back, back in the early days, um, you know, there was there's a little bit of luck, if you like, in that uh, the ARM7 microcontrollers were becoming very popular, and that's um, like like a good target for for free art or so. Um, there was a kind of evolution, if you like, of uh, starting, I think we were working on an LPC 2106 or something like that. that was one of the first arms we did. And, um, you know, by doing that, and, you know, that was an NXP part. So, you know, in talking with NXP and then, you know, People on the forums were asking for, oh, that's really great, but we're using this chip. So then we're going to do a port to that chip. That's really great, we'll do this chip. So it kind of grew. And those discussions with um, you know, the, the general market, Silicon guys, it kind of grew and grew and grew over time uh, to a point where there are just so many requests coming in for support for different things. Um, I think we ended up probably working with most most of the general market parts. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, tell us then, you know, we, we you, you, you kind of addressed this, uh, I guess, uh, breach into a, a now what I would call a very robust partner ecosystem. I mean, like if you go to the free RTOS website, scroll down a little bit and you're going to see just all the big players are there. Like everyone's logo is there, um, including <laughs> arms. So, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of collaboration going on nowadays. I can imagine great collaboration happening. Um, let's, let's touch on some of that collaboration real quick. You know, like what, what kind of stuff you're with AWS, I'm with arm. I don't even know what arm is doing with free RTOS right now. So maybe you could tell me to fill me in on the cool stuff that arm is doing. And then also, you know, like what, what's AWS doing, um, with free RTOS right now. And then we're going to, then we'll dive into some more like, you know, value adds and some of the cool features um, inside for your toss. Yeah, right. So um, I can, I, I, I completely uh, didn't talk about AWS in that little history before. Yeah. <laughs> so I, over the years, as, as uh, I'm, I'm well aware, um, the, 
the amount of software on your embedded devices is, is just grown. And I think IoT is particularly a, a, a good example of this in that um, the amount of what we call undifferentiating software on your on your devices is as a proportion of your application much bigger now. I mean, previously you might have had the real-time kernel. I, so real, for us, we were talking about microcontrollers, right? It's a very small, simple system. It's, it's, it's a don't, don't think of an operating system like Linux or Android. It's sort of, kind of statically linked and small, fits on the microcontroller. Um, so memory is, memory is a, a scarce resource. And when you start adding uh, internet connectivity or secure internet connectivity, you've got TLS and you've got TCP, and then you've got the things you need to actually do the secure boot and the storage and application layer protocols like MQTT and HTTP. So, yeah, it, it, it gets big. And um, I think both, both with AWS and, and with ARM, there's a desire to make that uh, simpler for people. Just, just the amount of skills you need in a team is, is increased, right? I always say you might be an expert at motor control might have PhDs in it and be the world's leading expert, but still not know how to connect, you know, what the protocols you need or how to secure it and that kind of thing. So the breadth of skills. So, um, you know, there, there's many millions of people using uh, free art, many millions of devices, I should say, using free art as their connect with uh, AWS IoT. And uh, by the way, it's all MIT licensed using open standards. So uh, I say, we talk about AWS, but there's nothing specific in the software to AWS. Um, so when I say millions of devices connecting to AWS, I see the statistics there. I, I'm sure the other cloud providers e equally. Um, and so yeah, Am Amazon are one, they have a, an interest in making sure that those people who are connecting can do so uh, as securely as possible, as quickly as possible. Um, yeah, the monetization in that case is in the cloud, right? Uh, there's also uh, making sure that the, the kernel runs on uh, all the latest hardware, anything that someone may use to connect, we want to be able to make sure that we are uh, you know, supporting. So, um, you know, that, that the, re the resource available, uh, me as a small, small company before, and an explosion of software we have to provide is a very symbiotic relationship uh, with AWS. The other, the other thing is, um, you know, the the expertise in security that we have available now. So a lot of the libraries now have things like memory safety proofs done on them. Before we were doing like static checking or that kind of thing, but now we go a bit beyond that, and we can use the experts to do memory safety proofs and that kind of thing. So it's all it's all about helping people. Uh, in, a, in an increasingly complex scenario. Um, uh, so that was the AWS part and the, yeah, so um, Armour obviously, uh, yeah, uh, um, you know, through, through the licensees at least, um, you know, a big part of what we support. Uh, and like, likewise there, you know, portability and making things simpler for people. Uh, it's all about making, trying to give people as much as possible, as high quality as possible, uh, ensuring that the maximum amount of engineering time can be on the differentiation. So, so some standards, of the standards with differentiation, right? I mean, that's that seems to be a, a, a theme across the board. I mean, I guess in this case, not really necessarily standards, but allowing allowing developers to focus their engineering efforts in, instead of on things that that their secret sauce rather than reinventing the wheel right and i mean this is exactly, building yeah. upon the, the shoulders of giants i use this quote too often everyone but like you know newton's quote on building on the shoulders of giants right yeah so every every device that's connecting is going to need a tls stack so why would you write your own yeah um every every device is going to need a TCP stack. And no one would think of writing their own, right? So and it's just that amount of software that they need is, is much larger now. And uh, security is one of the things which is um, the most esoteric, if you like. And I think um, the consequences of getting it wrong are also the most kind of severe. 
So we've done, so in, in our software, we, we kind of split everything that's in Git, the free Artos organization in GitHub is totally using open standards. Uh, anything which is accessing an AWS service, which is obviously AWS specific, is in the AWS GitHub org. Um, so in in the um, Briotos organization, like I said, we're using PKCS 11, which is uh, an open standard, I think, which is uh, managed by Oasis. Um, so uh, probably a couple of years back now, so time's getting, <laughs> with COVID, time is getting a bit blurry. It's probably a couple of years back. Uh, we worked with ARM to uh, enable that PKCS 11 to work with uh, any device that had the um, PSA APIs, the platform, platform security architecture APIs. So if you're running um, TFM, which is the trusted firmware M on an ARM V8M device, then um, you know, our, our software will run on there. It, it's the, the PSA is like a, a port of PKCS 11. So that's, that's a really good example of um, you know, a, a collaboration and there's blog posts on our website about it and, uh, and that kind of thing. Great. Yeah. And so, that, that, um, that was more of a historic collaboration. Yeah. No, it's good. Oh, no, it's still, good. Yeah. I think it's important, right? It's important yeah. to cover these kind of things. And there, uh, as we have posted right now, the free .org website, you can go check that out. They have a great, um, I want to say very easy to use website, you know, have everything lined up up top, like nice little subcategories, drop downs, go explore their community pages with all their blogs, their forums, all sorts of cool stuff on there. Um, get, get involved as well. And get involved. This is one of the big call to actions here, right? And mm -hmm. we're going to start talking about this. I mean, we still have a good 27 minutes left in the show here. So uh, let's start talking about some of the components um, that make up free RTOS, right? So um, on the website, uh, it's, very, very well mentioned or, or mentioned very predominantly about the kernel, the secure kernel or the trusted kernel mm -hmm. and the libraries. So these seem to be some pretty core components um, to what free RTOS is. So maybe you can shine some light on what makes um, the free RTOS kernel unique. Um, and also maybe talk about like package management or this library management system that you all have or how how these libraries get added into free RTOS, how they're utilized, why this is important, what the, what the, the, uh, what the, uh, let's, the library. Um, oh my gosh, I'm going to blank here. What does you, what, what, what are you, what do you have in there that makes uh, RTOS free RTOS special with regards to um, uh, your library repertoire? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So, so let's start with that. Yeah. I mean, originally there was just, there was just the kernel. And um, then, then we added a, a TCP IP stack. Why did we add a TCP IP stack? I just said, no one's gonna go and write a TCP IP stack. And, the, and now I'm saying that's what, exactly what we did. You have to put it in the time context. So uh, we're, we're very, very proud of the, the support that we give to FreeRTOS users. And now of course you've got uh, lots of Amazon engineers supporting FreeRTOS users directly on the forums. And you've got uh, community members supporting directly on the forums. Uh, but one of the one of the issues we had in the early days was um, people really struggling with TCP/IP and the integrations, and a lot of the support was nothing to do with FreeRTOS. It was integration issues with TCP. So we ended up writing our own to make that. So we could, so we could support it to the same level. You know, then clock clock forwards uh, to the to the IoT age. Then. Um, you know, there's uh, everything everything you need for secure connectivity really on there as well. Um, so uh, you know, I mentioned we we have we have what we call the core libraries. Well, first of all, the the kernel and the TCP/IP stack are uh, what what we call the legacy libraries. They're, that's not to mean that they're, they're still being fully developed and fully maintained, but they're they're the older ones. The core libraries then uh, we've done a lot of work. To make sure that they're completely standalone, so there's no de there's no dependency on the kernel. So things like uh, Core MQTT, for example, there's actually no dependency on multi-threading. So we test it on Linux as well, for example. Um, you you can run it uh, without multi-threading. You can run it very simply with um, 
you know, just within one task. And then we have an agent which actually brings in all, if you want to have, you know, full multi-threading, so you, all your tasks can use it, the same connection simultaneously and that kind of thing. Um, so there's, you know, core MQTT, core HTTP, core PKCS11. Um, there's things like uh, back off algorithms for, you know, if you have a fleet of devices, you have a million devices all connecting to the cloud and for some reason they all get disconnected at the same time then there are certain algorithms that uh, enable them to stagger gracefully reconnecting so you don't get like a connection storm. There's all, there's all, um, all that, that on there. That's, it's, you know, a growing number of things. So, so um, you know, let's, let's talk about uh, community and support, right? So um, I, it's funny, I'm actually like fighting off a sneeze right now. So <laughs> if all of a sudden I sneeze, I'm sorry. Um, but let's talk about community and support. Uh, so um, you have a great little community section, or I should say support section on, on the free RTOS website here, community and support section. In fact, let me just share my screen real quick while I'm at it. Share, I'm gonna bring up the, the website. Stop sharing screen. I had this other one on here. Share screen, window. Here's the RTOS, free RTOS website. So under the, uh, I'm gonna talk about some of these components here. So under the, uh, the, the support area, you have this books and manuals area. You know, usually what you're looking at when you kind of come into sites like this, I, I usually poke around and try to find like the developer hub, like developer docs, you know, secondary docs. But you have this unique area here with books and manuals. And I I, I don't see this that often. What What is this books and manuals area? What are you covering here? So the it, it's a, a reference manual for the API. And there's also uh, a book which is um, an introductory guide. It's not it's not an advanced book. It also doesn't I mean it doesn't describe how the system works. It's a, it's a user guide. I have to say it's embarrassingly out of date. That's all um, right. Uh, but you know what what's in there is still very is still true and valid. It just doesn't have all the latest features in it. Um, cool. Um, and then this community section, you have a forums area, which I actually opened up over here. Looks like you have all the little partner areas, libraries, kernel, definitely everything that, that I, I feel should be touched on. Um, yeah. Blogs, media, webinars, um, free art tosses on Twitter for, I'm guessing, live updates or things that are going on, you know, uh, in, in, in live and uh, for, for announcements. Um, how might a new user or a developer that wants to kind of breach this, this area, um, get involved. You know, what's, what's the call to action for, for developers out there for, for free RTOS? Yeah, well, well, we, we're very, very much encouraging people to, uh, you know, if we, if we discuss something on the forum, then, uh, and it turns out that there's an enhancement someone wants, well, there's a bug, then uh, you know we're very, very encouraging that they go and do that themselves and, and create a pull request for us. Um, more, more um, you know, things which are more uh, substantial, like a new library or something like that. Then uh, yeah, that takes us a bit longer. Um, the, the there are you know certain quality criteria that we that we go through for example the thing you know the static checking using covariance to do checking and um things like the uh code complexity metrics and um yeah anything we we release these days goes through uh the appsec review with with aws again you say what you say what's unique about freeartos i think um to, to have the the resource and the backing of a company like AWS with the expertise they bring and the worldwide presence, you know, that they bring um, in a in a product which is MIT licensed, so you can use it for whatever you want, and um, that's I think that's that that's a, a a huge value. It's almost like it's almost like too good. What's the catch and Quite often, quite often, it's hard to it's hard to explain to people. Actually, there's no catch. <laughs> I, I wasn't have no reason for doing it. I mean, I, I obviously work on that pretty pretty much full time for Amazon, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 good. So, Richard, what's the catch? 
No, just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so let's let's talk about uh, the the importance of security. I, I think you've touched on it, right? Mm -hmm. But let's dive a little deeper. Uh, the importance of security for IoT, of course, everyone knows that security is super important. You're connecting tons of devices together, or you know, in a in a particular uh, setup that is more vulnerable uh, compared mm -hmm. to a more centralized network. Um, uh, so you have security for IoT, how free RTOS and trusted firmware M helps. Let's also talk about the PSA certification. So so t tell us, what, why is this important? How does free RTOS address security? Yeah, I mean, free RTOS provides the building blocks for security, right? If it, so I've talked about the libraries, and we also talked briefly about um, ExpressLink. If you, if you look at something um, like for us, I said, we've, we've, done, we've made a lot of effort to make sure that everything is standalone. You can mix and match components. So when I say standalone, there's, we were talking about MQTT. There's no dependency on a TCP stack. There's no dependency on a TLS stack. Um, so you can consume it. You know, we take the software wherever the, the developer is. So if you're consuming it in a, an existing project or whether you're creating a new project, uh, you have all those options, but um, the problem the problem with that, of course, is that uh, you, people don't necessarily come. You know, they don't necessarily get the security right. Which is why we have these why we have these reference integrations. There's like an infinite combination of the ways that you can put these things together. Uh, when you start talking about security, then it, it, it's a very there's lots and lots of gray areas uh, because there's no, just in general conversation, there, there, there's no quantifiable, you can't quantify what the security is, if you like. So with things like PSA, it's what I, what I call um, T-shirt sizing. You, you, you've got you know, good security, best security, uh, um, was it good, good, better, and best. Um, and, and by kind of bucketing things like that and having criteria that you can judge against is, is a way of directing. Well, firstly, it's a way of educating people um, because there is that kind of checklist, if you like. And it's a way of uh, you know, being able to understand where you fit in there. It, it's not too fine grained, you know. So ta you know, taking uh, you know, integrations through certification is just, uh, I mean, there's, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm assuming the obvious benefit is obvious, right? You, 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 you have some, some, uh, you know, secure, uh, or helps, helps with security at the end of it, but more beyond that, it just helps the conversation, helps people understand and helps that education. So they're not just, here's all our libraries and go for it, right? Well, how secure is it? I don't know. Well, if it is it level one, level two, level three, then it's then you can help people more. But I say with the libraries, right? We made them as easy, as interchangeable as possible, and as easy to consume as possible. The Express Link is kind of like the other way. Everything there is integrated for you, and it does the key management for you. It does the over-the-air update for you. So um, you know you don't have to learn the APIs. You don't have to look at the reference integrations. So if that's the way you want to go, then uh, a lot of that, you know, when we talk about that undifferentiating work, you just stick that on your board, right? You have a, a serial port on there and, and that whole conversation is uh, about the connectivity part, at least is, is kind of done. Nice, nice. Okay, I think you covered that. Um, so, so Richard, I'm I'm a little concerned we're going to run out of time, and I know you have a really cool demo to show. So, <laughs> I, I, I want to get some questions, actually, some comments and some questions that that came up in in the YouTube chat real quick. So, number yeah. one is we have Nikhil here. Um, so he says he's joining the AWS Free RTOS team next month. Oh and wow! He's excited. So maybe right. he'll be working with you on that. Um, Excellent. Well, welcome. Yeah. And then we have uh, another question or a question here from Sandeep Mystery. Um, he's actually one of uh, my colleagues at ARM. So where are, sorry, were there any challenges adding symmetric multiprocessing SMP support to free RTOS 
And what type of applications have you seen using the free RTOS SMP feature? That's a that's an interesting one. So the, the the what happened with SMP is there were several partners that had created their own SMP versions of FreeRTOS. So if people aren't aware, SMP is where you have multiple cores, but one instance of FreeRTOS, which is then able to schedule across multiple cores. So there, there were at least three versions, SMP versions that we were aware of. Uh, and our main role in that was actually just to consolidate them into a single version, which we want to do because it's um, it, like I was saying with TCP, right? If there's a single version, then we can maintain it and we can, um, you know, do the, the pen testing and we can then support it to the same level as everything else. So I think the, 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 the main challenge there was consolidating things that were done slightly differently in, into the SMP version. I think there's there's still work there to be done on the actual um, the, the the efficiency of the actual scheduling algorithm in there as well. Uh, we haven't we haven't optimized that yet. But. So hopefully that answers your question there, Sandeep. Um, uh, it, it seems like uh, there were some challenges, not that many. Um, and then Sean Heimel joins us uh, saying, uh, "I just learned that SMP was recently added, so I'm very curious about this too." Nice. Yeah, at the moment, if you go to the kernel repo in GitHub, so it's like GitHub slash FreeRTOS, then you'll find the kernel repo is one of the two pinned ones. It's actually on a branch at the moment because uh, there's a, there's a what, what we're doing at the moment is investigating whether we can bring the single and multi-core versions together without impacting people that are only using a single core. So we need to make sure there's no memory or runtime uh, overhead for people that are just on a single core. If, if we can establish that, then we'll merge the two together. But at the moment, they're kind of separate. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so um, no more questions are popping up right now. I think we have a chance to dive into this demo here. Uh, Richard, as we discussed earlier, I think uh, it'd be great if you could just kind of provide us this overview. What are you about to cover? Give us the highlights, and then we can dive right into the screen share and get uh, get the demo showcased. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll scoot over this very, very quickly then. Um, what, I, what I'd like to do is, uh, you know, I've talked a little bit about the, um, the composability, which is an interesting word that only software engineers use, of the libraries. Uh, so I can show you how um, they, those libraries are brought in with um, sub, Git submodules. Why don't I just share my screen whilst, 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 I'm, whilst I'm talking? So how, how we can bring those in with Git submodules, and then one of the collaborations with ARM that we've done very recently, and in fact has just gone gone live, is uh, SimSys packs. So um, we'll look at those two methods of bringing libraries in, and then um, then we'll look. Then we'll actually run run something on the the ARM virtual hardware. So we have a. a uh, Embedded World, uh, one of my colleagues, Paul, is is doing a talk with Armin. He's created a workshop, which is um, you know, get, getting to market faster with Arm virtual hardware. Uh, I've probably got the title of that wrong. And uh, so I can just show show an example of, of um, you know, what goes with got, what goes with this talk. So I'm talking. So before I bring your screen up, I just want to make sure because right now you're showing the uh, the the stream. So maybe you want to pull up the the right. Um, yeah. That's what I, yeah. So yeah. So we don't disappear we into, a, into an echo chamber. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. So so let's let's talk about this. What what are you going to show us here? So this this is um, the NXP project, which was on my uh, one of the boards that was on my desk. Um, so this this is an example of just bringing libraries into a, a, a project structure, so it looks like everything everything else that uh, NXP uh, provide. Um, then I'm going to very, very quickly, excuse me, just do that. Um, so if I then go to uh, github.com slash freeartos, then you'll find that there's this uh, STM32 U5 version as well. This is uh, looking, if we come in here and we look at the, so this is the middleware than the ARM directory. Here you can see that this is using the um, TFM, Trusted Firmware M. So this is sub-moduling in the uh, Trusted Firmware M. 
and the, the PKCS11 to the PSA. It's also submodulating in, uh, which is this OTA PAL PSA here. Um, and it's also, if you go to the uh, Freatas part, then we're submodulating in all these libraries. Uh, if we go back up one, we can also see the, um, the AWS part where these are clients for AWS IoT services, which are also being submodule. So everything is in its own Git repo and doesn't have dependencies on anything. So it's try, trying to be as flexible as possible. Uh, now, if we look at um, the virtual hardware, here we have the AWS marketplace where you can do a search for ARM um, and you will find ARM virtual hardware here. So you, know, you, you can follow the instructions here and subscribe, and this will create uh, an EC2 instance, which is a cloud, which is, a, you know, there's a server created that you can connect to. So the server's hosted in the cloud uh, and you can connect to it and run the virtual hardware on there, which I will demonstrate here. I'm just very cognizant of being talking too much and not left enough time for this. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm still here, by the way. I'm just, I'm removing my picture to give more screen, screen space, uh, but I'm still here. No, you're, do, you're doing great. This is awesome. Yeah. If, if we go a little over, it's fine, but, but yeah. yeah. So uh, here I've just got Visual Studio Code and there's a plugin for this, which uh, enables you to do remote connections. So I can connect. This is my uh, EC2 instance, which is running. So this is uh, a Linux server, which is remote. So I can click on there. So all the live demos I've done recently, I, I, was, I did um, that NXP series. I was doing like over the air updates and this kind of thing all live and everything, everything worked. <laughs> so I'm, I'm uh, tempting fate here. Uh, so here we have, um, the, so, now, so now we have Visual Studio Code, which is connected to the remote host, which is running the virtual hardware. So I, I, was, I was using this before. If we look in here, what we'll find is we've just got a, a getting started project. So this is just connecting. So this is something that you can use as a base. Remember that undifferentiated, undifferentiated heavy lifting part. So this project is just connecting. So you can start with this and then add in your differentiation. So um, if you look in here, then you, know, you can see we, we can switch boards. We're actually running on the core stone. It's configured for the core stone 300 at the moment. Uh, which is an M55 device. So we've got Priatos running on an M55 using the virtual hardware. We don't actually have silicon in our office for it yet. Um, but in here, you can see that this is using our SimSys packs. So now we're bringing in things like the uh, core MQTT, which I keep mentioning, as a SimSys pack. So this is um, kind of demonstrating how flexible these things are. You might have an application which is using none of our software. Maybe it's even using Linux uh, or another RTOS. And uh, it's got connectivity already. And you just want to bring in uh, MQTT so you can connect to the cloud. Um, it's a very small, you know, hardened library. So you can do that. Um, so this is using the, the, the kind of ARM, uh, I'm going to get the name wrong, the kind of SimSys build system here as well. So we can, um, if, if I'm, I'm not, I won't do a build here because I don't know how long it's going to take. But if we look down here, we've got um, the, uh, there's a, a, a little script there to run as well. So I can just do dot slash run and we should find yeah, so now, now, what, now what it's doing is it's created a secure connection from EC2 to IoT Core, which is the, the gateway, if you like, into AWS IoT. And once you've got your data into AWS IoT, you, know, you, you can send it to the, the whole plethora of different services. Just, it's a bit, this is the connectivity example of flashing an LED, right? So we, we're connecting and we're sending messages backwards and forwards. So if I come to, uh, this is the AWS IoT console, and I go to 
IoT Core page, we can see there is a little test client we have here. And um, that's a wildcard just to subscribe to everything. If I subscribe to that, then you, you can see the messages coming in here as well. So it's just a little task zero publishing message 170 and what have you. So that's um, a very <laughs> a will, a whirlwind kind of demonstration of uh, you know what what Paul's going to be talking about at Embedded World, and also um, there's a workshop uh, that's going to be published. But I think it's, I think that's going live before Embedded World as well. Um, I think you covered it, Richard. I think you you managed to get it done before the end of the show. So <laughs> well done. No, that's really cool. Um, I mean, gosh, I'm looking at this run of show. I'm looking at our agenda today, and we didn't get to cover everything. I, I wanted to try and knock all of this out, but um, it's it really is a, a pretty deep topic. You know, Free Artos has a lot of stuff going on, and and so uh, we might need to um, touch base again in a few months. Maybe get you back on here and see uh, uh, maybe talk a little bit more about this, and maybe point out some other cool projects that are that are using uh, Free Artos bring on some uh, some other folks uh, that are involved. But real quick, because we only have a few more minutes, maybe you could kind of highlight a little bit about what's next. So we, got, we still have the what's next and your shameless plug before I close out this show. I want to remind everyone, you know, we value your time. You're watching this. You're here with us. If you do have to bow out at the end of the hour, feel free to go ahead and tune out. This will be on demand here on YouTube so you can – you can watch it later as well if you have other meetings to get to. So thank you for joining us. Um, still, let's let's finish this off. We can still go a couple minutes over. Richard, what's next? Could you share some details on the IoT training I think that you have going on with ARM and AWS? I think you're developing some free RTOS components with some Kyle tools um, and the ARM virtual hardware. Is there anything going on there? Um, and then um, I think you have a call to action. Let's touch on this one more time with the embedded world stuff. Yeah. So, uh, what's what's next? I think the um, the virtual hardware, like I said at the moment, is, is like the the LED blinky for connectivity. So, uh, building out more in that. So um, that that's like becomes a full reference. Uh, but like like the ones on the hardware I showed uh, showed previously, um, the. Uh, yeah, the free artist team is working quite hard on the the on the express link so uh you know expanding and expanding and promoting the ecosystem there is uh is good um continuing to listen to the community um you know people people <laughs> people think that we are uh kind of dictating the direction things go but you know the whatever's happening in the world is directing where where things go so listening to what people are struggling with at any particular time and 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 trying to to help um and uh yeah excellent all right i think you covered the shameless plug too there uh because i'm looking at it you were talking about the embedded world talk um just a reminder here as well because i have this noted in here um, so ARM and AWS will both have booths at Embedded World. Um, if you want to write this down now, anyone watching who will be at Embedded World, um, ARM booth is going to be in Hall 4, uh, booth 4-140. <laughs> no one's writing this down. <laughs> and then AWS booth will be in Hall 4, booth 4-548. Um, and I'm pretty sure there's pamphlets and all sorts of information at the event itself that you can go find these booths. But ARM and AWS will both have booths. Richard, are you going to go to uh, Embedded World? Will you be there? Yeah, well, that was good. That was actually going to be my shameless plug. That oh, I'm, I'm, great. I'm doing a talk on uh, Tuesday, I think, four four o'clock German time. So, um, yeah, come come along to that. I need to start getting out to uh, to some events. This is uh, this has been brutal. Uh, you know, I'm a developer evangelist and I am not able to get out there and evangelize right now. So it's it's pretty tough. But um, hopefully I'll be able to start joining uh, you all at events very soon as well. Um, I heard a, a noise. Okay, so um, Richard, top of the hour. We're going to get to close this out. Um, everyone in the chat is thanking you, saying that you need to come back soon. Let's just kind of let's kind of go over some of these uh, real quick. Thanks, Richard, from Sean. 
Uh, thanks from Nick Hill, from Blue Valhalla. Everyone wants you to come back, Richard. So we're going to be in touch, okay? Yep. All right, no great. Uh, and thank you so much for your time. Uh, we know that you could have spent this hour doing anything else, and yet you spent it with us here on Innovation Coffee. So we really appreciate you, uh, Richard, for joining us. Any last words before I close out the episode? I would just uh, appreciate appreciate the invite. So it's been it's been good. Excellent, excellent. All right. Well, Richard, thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Um, if you want to stick around for just a second, I'm going to close this out, and maybe we could have a a quick chat in the green room. All right. Mm -hmm. um, excellent. All right, everyone watching, thank you so much for your time as well. And we hope to see you again in our next episode. As I did mention, we are kind of going through a bit of a rework for the Innovation Coffee live stream series. So bear with us while we figure out our new cadence. I don't know if we're going to be changing our time slot. I hope we stick with this time slot. It seems pretty, pretty good one. Um, but yes, please stick with us. Bear with us while we while we figure out our, our rework here. We might be bringing on a new co-host, working on that. Um, and there are lots of exciting and fun episodes scheduled ahead throughout 2022. So stay tuned. Um, make sure you follow us on ARM Software Developers, uh, ARM Software Dev, at ARM Software Dev on Twitter. If you want to join our Discord server, maybe we can get that little that little rolling banner at discord.gg forward slash arm software dev. That's where we hang out on the daily. And we uh, uh, thank you all for being here. Have a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful weekend. See you next time.